make a wish and it can work if you do it the right way. Join with us now as we meet a few of the people that have been involved in the realms of witchcraft. This is Gerald Brusso Gardner, the man who is credited with the rebirth of the witchcraft movement in Great Britain. He was born on June 13th, 1884, at Great Crosby in Lancashire. The locals knew the entire family as eccentrics. Gardner travelled the world, and when he returned to England, he claimed that he met up with one of the few remaining covens of witches in the New Forest in Hampshire. He went on to become initiated into the coven, and published some of the rituals of this group fictional form in the late 1940s. With the repeal of the Witchcraft Act in 1951, he published further books on the subject of a factual nature, including Witchcraft Today and the Meaning of Witchcraft. On his death in 1964, another man rose to fame, mainly through the power of the media. In this archive film, we meet Alex Sanders, and as you will no doubt find, when you read up on the subject of witchcraft, there are two streams, Gardnerian and Alexandrian. But neither really teach you to look into yourself. Bear this in mind. Let us now look into the realms of Alexander's. So, Alexander's claimed to be king of the witches. He died on 30th of April, 1988 in Hastings. Here, in a TV archive interview, he talks about his initiation by his grandmother. Me, blindfolded me, um, scourged me, you'd say whipping. Um, my ceremony was a bit different because I came from a bloodline of witches uh, with a little sickle knife. She drew blood from my scrotum. So I was blooded because I'm the blood. And uh, all my children are the blood. I've got ten of them. And you were a witch at the age of seven. What effect did it have on you? Uh, very little. It was just something that was frightening. Um, I thought, can you imagine what a little boy must be like with the unknown? It's like going to church. I was as much in awe of my grandmother as I was of the priest. Alex has been a major figure in the revival of witchcraft and in 1962 was elected king of the witches. Always the showman, ceremonies like this fire ritual have earned him a fortune over the years. But although his influence has waned, he still runs a flourishing coven in Hastings. Here he is initiating another new member, with a six-year-old girl taking part. What about the little girl? Little girl, she's my witch. Come on. Come to me. Isn't it stepdaughter? This wasn't she a little bit frightened? Are you frightened of me? We could do rituals for them, couldn't we? Shall we do a little? Shall we? You know the tree would you like to do it with me. Put the music back on me, Nicky, just for one minute. Why do you involve such a young child? Um, because she's part of my family. And uh, why should I involve her with the church, if not with my own church? But some people might think it... I think it's dangerous that a six-year-old was involved in that. I could care less what other people think. Like I don't bother about other people making their children Christians. She was not initiated. She was brought under the care and guidance of the Great Mother. Of our goddess. But you're going to bring her up under the... Uh, when she is ready to please herself and ask for the initiation ceremony, if we feel that she's ready for it, then she'll receive it from us. I have my beliefs, and I have my practices, I have my religion, and it's not done me any harm. But don't you think that's going to affect her for the rest of her life? <coughs> of course it will. You don't think that's bad? Uh, the fact of becoming a Christian does not affect her being a Buddhist or a Muslim does not affect people if they genuinely believe in what they're doing. This is Doreen Valiente. 
leading author and one of the most prominent white witches in Europe and known worldwide. Dorian, our new Joe Gardner, can you tell us about, about well, how he was and how you met him? Well, Joe was a very remarkable man. In fact, really, he was one on his own. I've never known anybody else like him. And he wasn't by any means perfect, as which of us are. But I think he did an enormous job in reviving the old religion and a job that possibly nobody else could have done. Uh, we first met in uh, 1953 after we'd exchanged a few letters and he initiated me into the old religion. Um, do you think the craft has changed over the years when you first met? Oh yes, it has changed a very great deal because the whole social structure when I was first initiated is quite different from what it is now. In those days, the idea of anybody being witches was absolutely horrendous. In fact, there's only ceased to be actually illegal in 1951. And uh, anyone who publicly declared themselves to be a witch well, they uh, really took their professional or social life in their hands to do so. What, what, what happened to some of the was found out to be a witch? Is it in both court cases? Well, they would <laughs> they'd probably lose their job, possibly the custody of their children, get kicked out of their house if uh, they had a, that sort of landlord or landlady and so on. And uh, consequently, it really, apart from the old tradition of secrecy, we still had to keep secret. Yeah. How did you actually find that uh, your neighbours reacted when you moved in here? Oh, well, now this was quite different. You see, this is an example of how things have changed. I find today that provided you behave in a pretty normal manner, nobody minds about your being a witch. The whole social attitude has definitely changed. People are not so uptight as they used to be in the 1950s. But what would you actually say to young people that um, are attracted by the mystique of the craft, uh, how would you advise them to become involved? Well, I think that uh, there are a lot more ways of becoming involved today than were ever possible before. For instance, um, popular occult magazines that used to be horrified at the very name of witchcraft nowadays will publish uh, contact advertisements. But then, of course, one has to sound a note of caution because people have got to use their own judgment and their own common sense about the sort of contacts that they make. Have you actually come across anybody that's maybe written to you and been led astray by a devious group of any sort? Well, I get an enormous number of people write to me about all sorts of things, and quite honestly, I owe them all a blanket apology, because if I answered all the letters that I get, I should never be able to do anything else. But I do know and again manage to write to some of them. And I think people today, you know, are pretty discriminating. I mean, we hear a lot of stories about people who say, I was an innocent young girl and I was lured into witchcraft and I didn't know what I was getting into, etc, etc. Well, quite honestly, I really take this sort of thing with a, a large pinch of salt, you know, because um, I, I, I get rather sceptical when somebody says to me, oh yes, we made blood sacrifices of animals and we had uh, sexual orgies and we took drugs, but I never dreamed I was getting involved in black magic. For goodness sake, what did they think they were getting involved with? <laughs> uh, no, I'm afraid I take the innocent being lured uh, with a rather large grain of salt these days. If people get into things where they, they know jolly well they're invoking evil, well, they've only got themselves to blame if they get a response, haven't they? Going back to the Book of Shadows, um, many people watching this tape will have probably read other books, and they will find that there is a... a a seemingly a clash of ideas between the Alexandrian system and the Gardnerian system. Could, could you actually um, elaborate the, the, the systems for us? Well, no, this is really very funny, really, because um, 
You see, I've seen a copy of Alexander's Book of Shadows. And it is quite obvious that it's derived from Gerald Gardner's Book of Shadows. Well, I know that dear old Alex said that he uh, copied all this down from his witch grandmother. But I'm afraid he jolly well couldn't have copied some of the things in there because I wrote them in the 1950s. <laughs> So, um, the, I believe there are also some quotes taken from Rudyard Kipling in the Book of Shadows as well. Oh yes, there are, quite definitely. I didn't put those in, incidentally, Gerald did. Yeah. You see, what old Gerald said to me when I first started working with him, and this was back in 1953, was that he had the basis of these old rituals from the cover that he found in the New Forest, which was headed by old Dorothy. But he said that the rituals he got were very fragmentary. He'd already published them in fictional form before he ever met me in his novel, High Magic Eight. But he said that apart from that, the rituals were very fragmentary and he had to eat them out with other words in order to make them workable. And uh, that verse from Rudyard Kipling was one of the bits that he put in. Actually, curiously enough, it quite obviously does refer to the old religion, and it makes you wonder how much Roger had to clean the news, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. So is it true to say, do you think, that um, parts of the Book of Shadows have um, found their way into other works, I mean, especially the parts that you've written, Yes. And people are putting their own label to them. Too right. In fact, I get rather bored with this, but <laughs> I've even recently had the experience of someone sending to my publisher what was a piece of my work and, and uh, putting it in their own book. But this has gone all over the world, and I suppose one can't really blame them, because they, they think it's traditional, you see, and of course it just wasn't, because I wrote it. Do you think, um, for the craft to survive, do you think that the Book of Shadows should be made available to those who don't want to join the group, say, carries on, or do you think that, how do you... Well, this, of course, is a very big question, and, and uh, it's hard to make a pronouncement about this, because social attitude, you see, and the whole situation of society has changed. And where in the old days there was a necessity for secrecy, when witchcraft was actually illegal, and in the days when it wasn't illegal but very much frowned on, you could see the necessity for secrecy. But on the other hand, today, I really don't see why people should not be able to get the rituals and why they shouldn't be able to use them. You see, I don't like this idea which has started to spring up in some quarters. But uh, some people have got uh, a way of saying, well, of course, we are the only genuine article, and if you've not been initiated by us, then you can't be a witch. Well, I don't like this sort of power hierarchy. I don't see why people need somebody's permission to follow the old religion and worship the old gods. And uh, I think what matters is whether people are sincere in their wish to follow the old ways and to carry them on. Not whether they've been initiated by so-and-so or somebody else and whether they've got umpteen degrees for this, that and the other. I think, uh, to paraphrase Gertrude Stein, a witch is a witch is a witch. Um, do you see, do you think the people then should be able to initiate themselves like self-initiation? Do you think that's so? Um... Well, let's face it. Who initiated the first witch? If anyone can answer me that, then uh, they can answer that question, can't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had an answer to it yet. And um, I think that if people want to follow the old religion, then their sincerity in wishing to develop their own powers ought to, and indeed does, enable them to make the contact with the inner planes for themselves, and that's what really matters. Do you find that many witches um, still wish they lived two or three thousand years ago rather than coming up to date and actually living in the 20th century? Oh, what a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I would have really wanted to live two or three thousand years ago because I 
think that this is an enormously interesting year that we're living right now. <laughs> and I'm reminded of the famous Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. But, <laughs> but we are, seriously though, I think we are at a turning point of the new age. And um, the, you can see the old Piscean age breaking up and you can see the new Aquarian age coming in. The great impact, for instance, which the Green Party is beginning to have. The realisation that people in all sorts of walks of life are beginning to have that we have just got to stop polluting and destroying our planet. All these things are indications of the coming in of the new age. And you can see at the same time the old concepts of the Piscean age breaking up. And I feel that the craft, the old religion, has got a part to play in this, and a very important part. And probably there's a reason why we've been incarnated at this present time. It's time that um, witches or pagans or whatever the term people would like to use, um, it's time they came out of the closet a little bit more, stopped arguing amongst themselves, and actually tackled issues that are a problem to this planet. Oh yes, because if we spend our time arguing amongst ourselves, then we're just wasting time, aren't we? There is an awful lot of arguing amongst ourselves that goes on. But I think people have got to recognise that there isn't going to be any such thing as uh, the one true book of shadows or the one true person who can initiate you or, the, in, that, in that case, the one true religion. I mean, for goodness sake, let's leave this to the backstreet tin chapels. As many different witches as there are, so there are going to be so many different kinds of witchcraft. And we're going to get people who want to come out into the open and we're going to get people who very much prefer to keep everything secret. And fine, why not? There's no reason why the two shouldn't be able to live together and make allowances for each other, because it's what they do that counts. And uh, I think this is important, that we shouldn't get this uh, tin chapel mentality of uh, we are the Lord's anointed, all others will be damned. Let's leave that to the question. The Rebirth of Witchcraft, uh, published by Robert Hale. Um, you do seem to give very controversial views about the different paths in the craft. Um, but what actually brought this about? Well, thinking things over as the years went by, I suppose. Uh, because I've been in the craft now for quite a long time, as I said, since 1953. I've seen a lot of uh, different movements come and go, and a lot of different people come and go. And some of the things that uh, I believed at first, I have rethought as the years went by. And uh, uh, yes, I'm afraid some of the things I've said have been rather controversial. I don't ask people to agree with them, I just ask people to think about them. So really, the, uh, from, the, from the way you write your books, uh, which we thoroughly enjoy, oh, okay. um, you do make pe people think for themselves, rather than presenting a view of you must do this. I think that's absolutely essential that people should think for themselves. Because if people don't make their own contact with the inner planes, they're not going to have any power, are they? This is enormously important. And it is important for people not slavishly to follow anyone's lead, I think. Uh, I hope witchcraft never sees any good news. And uh, if we can help people to develop their own powers, I think that's very important because and I, I know a lot of people criticize old Gerald. I've criticized him myself, but I will say this for him. That just about the first thing he ever taught me was that the power is in you. And you have got to learn to bring it out. And all the trappings of the circle, all the magical tools and so on, are simply there to enable you to do that, to create the atmosphere. For you to bring out your own power, which is natural, which is latent in everybody. And it isn't some sort of gift which people are given 
by some supernatural force. It is simply drawing out the natural powers that people have hidden in the depths of their own minds and psyches. I think that's true. What do you actually think the way is, um, the way ahead for the craft now? Well, this is, this is very interesting, the way that things are developing today. For one thing, we're seeing a much greater development of what, I, what I've called in my book feminist witchcraft. That is to say that women are taking much more of a, of a leading role in the craft than they did before. And I think this is a good thing. Because probably uh, this is really going back to the original roots of the craft. And it's very important. We've had, in the occult world, we've had an awful lot of male gurus, or would-be gurus, <laughs> No, women are really beginning to come into their own. Well, would, would you say that it's a matter that, whereas before, in the olden days, women were actually worshipped um, as the goddess, mm -hmm. if you like, whereas now they're actually standing up and becoming leaders rather than just objects that are being worshipped? Yes, I think that's a very good way to put it, actually. And another very important thing, which I think is the way forward for the craft, is the way that it's getting interested and involved with the issues connected with the New Age, what is generally rather vaguely referred to as the New Age. Issues of ecology, issues of natural healing, of natural medicine, and so on. Issues of people developing their own powers, their own minds. Issues of people being concerned about what's happening to our planet, and concerned about what's happening to our wildlife and our forests, and so on. This is part of the new age, and this is one of the great roles that the old religion is going to play in. I think you've made an interesting point there about um, saving the earth and also mm. about um, looking after wildlife and everything. And this definitely um, does away with the misconception that witches do harm to animals. Oh no, I think this is a dreadful idea. Because you see, in the old days, it was ceremonial magicians who used to do these animal sacrifices because they wanted to raise the power that way, but witches have got other ways of raising power. This is another of the points that old Joel Gardner made to me. He said these ceremonial magicians, many of whom actually were Christian priests, uh, used to use animal sacrifices because that was the only way they knew of raising power. But witches have got other ways, and so we have no need to do this sort of thing. I think the other main misconception is um, nowadays, many witches promote that uh, sex magic is okay between established couples. Mm -hmm. But there are a few people that do try to get into the craft and okay. pretend that there's one big mass orgy. Do you not agree with that? Well, I, I think there are plenty of mass orgies going around these days. And the, the permissive society, and you certainly don't need to be a witch if you want to get into that sort of thing. But um, I think it's much better if people work as an established couple. And this is another thing that Gerald believed in too. He said whatever people used to do in the old days, today the uh, best idea is for people to work as an established couple if they want to use the power of sex for magic. And of course sex is an enormously magical thing, apart from the fact that we would none of us be here without it. How do you see the, the growth of um, the Christian organisations using the media with satellite broadcasting and everything? Do you feel that there might come a time when the witch hunts of the Middle Ages reappear? Well, if some of their uh, Christian friends had their way, they would be reappearing now. They seem to be remarkably short on Christian charity when it comes to witches. Uh, and they seem to be very keen to promote the idea that witches do all sorts of dreadful things uh, and are totally in the power of Satan, in whose power, incidentally, they seem to believe much more than witches ever did. Well, quite honestly, I think that the Christian churches are running scared. They realise that a lot of people, especially young people, are turning to paganism, to... Um, find something which is more satisfying to them than 
they can find in the Christian churches and they're losing members and of course when they're losing members they're losing money and they're losing power and prestige and actually they don't like this and so they really are certain sections of them to be fair only certain sections of them they really are conducting a witch hunt in the present day in America and here this is a very sad thing really because um, I would rather see um, people of all different religions work together rather than be antagonistic to each other because after all, in my opinion, all religions have the same ultimate goal. But it wouldn't do for there to be one religion for everybody because everybody is different and what will inspire one person will not inspire another. So people should have different faiths and they should be tolerant of other people's faiths and respectful of other people's faiths. I'm not anti-Christian, it's the Christians who are anti-witch and I think this is very sad. But only certain sections of them, not all Christians are like this, to be fair. Going back to the Book of Shadows, um, which parts of it did you actually uh, write yourself? Well, I think the best known piece that I wrote is the piece that's come to be known as the Charge of the Goddess. And uh, rather to my surprise, this seems to have gone all over the world, literally. It's quite amazing. And also I wrote another piece which has... Uh, become very, very popular all over the world. It's called The Witch's Room. Dark of Night and Shining Room. And these pieces have become uh, regarded, apparently, as traditional. And quite a lot of people don't realize that, in fact, I wrote them. And your, your new book, um, which is coming out when? Ah, when I finish writing it. Because actually, you see, I'm collaborating with an old friend in writing that. He and I were both in a traditional witch coven many years ago, and uh, we've got together to put our memories together and write a book about traditional witchcraft, which is rather different from that which was practiced by either Gerald Gardner or Alexander. For those who don't know what traditional witchcraft is, can you tell me briefly? Oh, that's a good question too, isn't it? I'll <laughs> briefly how. Well, traditional witchcraft is that which has been hidden in, in the English countryside and elsewhere abroad for many, many years. And in some ways it does differ from what one has to say is the more modern version which was promoted by Gerald Gardner and Alexander. Because I think it's undoubted that Gerald did put in many of his own ideas into what all Dorothy taught. Well, I think for the viewer, I mean, we would highly recommend the rebirth of witchcraft. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Probably upset a few people, but... Uh, <laughs> well, nobody's going to be happy all of the time. Or, no. <laughs> um, but we really would recommend the book. Oh, thank you. I'm yeah. glad you like it. Well, when is your birthday, actually? Oh, I'm a Capricornian. Yes, I'm an old goat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, w w which day? Ah, that would be telling, wouldn't it? Why, why do you uh, want to know? Because I'm a Capricorn as well. Oh, jolly good. Hello, goat. <laughs> 26th. Ah. <laughs> anyway, Doreen Valiancy, thank you very much. By the flame that burneth bright, O horned one, we call thy name into the night, O ancient one. Thee we invoke by the moon-led sea, by the standing stone and the twisted tree. Thee we invoke where gather thine own, by the nameless shrine forgotten and lone. Come where the round of the dance is trod, horn a hoof of the goatfoot god. By moonlit meadow on dusky hill, when the haunted wood is hushed and still, Come to the charm of the chanted prayer, as the moon bewitches the midnight air. Evoke thy powers that potent bide, in shining stream and the secret tide, in fiery flame by starlight pale, in shadowy host that rides the gale, and by the fern brakes fairy haunted, of forests wild and woods enchanted, come, oh come, to the heartbeat's drum, come to us who gather below, 
When the broad white moon is climbing slow through the stars to the heaven's height, we hear thy hoofs on the wind of night as black tree branches shake and sigh. By joy and terror we know thee nigh. We speak the spell thy power unlocks at solstice, sabbat, and equinox. Word of virtue, the veil to rend. From primal dawn to the wide world's end, since time began, the blessing of Pan. Blessed be all in hearth and hold, blessed in all worth more than gold. Blessed be in strength and love, blessed be where'er we roam. Vision fade not from our eyes of the pagan paradise. Past the gates of death and birth, our inheritance of earth. From our soul the song of spring, fade not in our wandering. Our life with all life is one, by blackest night or noonday sun. Eldest of gods, on thee we call, blessing thee on thy creatures all. So much it takes.